Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sportsline News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be the final Flyers preview of the season as we're rounding out the season this evening against the Ottawa Senators, a team that obviously is building forward in their rebuild. Um, and they're a team that our Philadelphia Flyers are going to try to find a way to solve in the final game of this season. Obviously, for some fans, they don't want any more uh, wins in the season to have the better chance of the pick. But even then, if we don't want to win the game, you want to go out with a little bit more of a bang and a little bit more of momentum than a 4-0 loss like last time against Winnipeg. Against Chicago, I agree with Hayes. There's a lot of moments. Lankanen made big save. Uh, Sandstrom let in one that was bad. The only bad game he's honestly had, and I thought there were moments he was sharp in that game as well to save their bacon from not being more than 4 nothing. was in Winnipeg when he had a couple goals that he would want back. But... Overall, I did like the Frost, Tippett, and Cage line again. I'm surprised that in the projections they're switching it and they're putting Cage with Brink and Lawton. But I understand that's it's not that I mind that because there's still a bunch of young guys that are the next developing guys of the team that you expect to be on the team next year kind of staying together. So that I'm fine with. It's just more if Brink, or if not Brink, if Kate, Frost, and Tibbetts seem to be finding chemistry, and just because they didn't have it fully as a full line and having the same jam the entire game and looking like one of the better lines out there for one game, or maybe a game in a period if you want to say that, I don't think that should make you just all of a sudden change the line. That's the only problem I have with it. The Flyers team too quick to change things that actually worked for three games, and then just because it doesn't work for like four periods, all of a sudden they switch it. Like You should try to let some things develop, but Faraby, Frost, and Tibbet as a whole is a line, though. I actually don't mind because it's a bunch of young guys together. Faraby, a very good playmaker. Tibbet, a guy that can shoot the puck. And Frost has been stronger on the puck lately and very effective in the O-zone. So I still think, though, the reason I would have liked to keep Cates on the line is I still think Frost is a winger and Cates should be one of the guys at center. And they keep Lawton at center with Cates on the wing with Bobby Brink um, as the other guy, which I think that works fine because... Brink at this point of his career is more effective in the O-zone. Cates is very good in the D-zone. is obviously effective also in the O-zone. And then Lord, we know, is good in both zones. So the lines make sense. I just like trying to have some consistency. And the fact that Cates, Frost, and Tibbetts seem to be gelling together um, as a line, I think this is something that they should have just kept together for a bit. But it is what it is. It's the final game of the season, so I'm not going to trip over it that much. I'm just saying my personal opinion. I think it would have been cool to keep that together going into the final game of the season. And riding that in the next season since it seemed like that sign had chemistry on and off the ice. So, I don't know why they wouldn't keep it together. But at the same time, like I said, it's not that big of a deal. Because Frost, Tibbet, and Farabee are all guys that you would think maybe one of them won't be. But the other two are definitely going to be on the team next season. And those are guys that you're going to be building forward with. And then Brink and Cage are definitely those guys too. So, those guys getting chemistry with each other would be who of you as well. So, I understand from that standpoint... It's just when you have a line that was so good as that third line. I would have kept it together for a bit, but it is what it is. I think the Flyers, though, all have had some signs of goodness in the roundabout parts of this season just because it's been a terrible season for the Flyers, but they were able to beat Pittsburgh. They were obviously able to battle with Buffalo, but guys you want to see in these youngsters, in the Noah Cates, Bobby Brinks, fairby has been good uh, rounding out the season. He's been noticeable in the ice. Tippett and Frost have been good. I think Lindblom's honestly been fine. I just think he's been buried down a lineup. Provy's been better um, in the last roundabout of the season, the last month of the season, than he was the entire season, which he would definitely say himself. I think it was his worst season. Ronnie Adder also, after having his first, I would say, six-ish games, Looked like he needed to have a lot more, not a lot more, but more fine-tuning in the NHL. Now it looks like he could potentially make the team from the jump. Hogberg's kind of just been what is, um, <clears throat> what basically you see from him with the fans just to keep the game simple, never going to impress you, but probably not going to piss you off that much either because he just keeps the game simple, gets the puck up the ice, and lets the other guy just do their work. Sanheim obviously is the best defenseman this year, but I'll talk about this more in my season wrap-up, but I think we've seen guys, Sanheim's a guy that has to stay on the team for next year, he's just entering his prime, maybe he can be somebody like one of the Islanders defensemen, like a Pulik or like a Pelik who develop later, and uh, then really start doing good, Zamula's look good in his eight games, he still has moments of lapses of a young guy, but that's fine because you expect that, and he's paired with Keith Yondo, who's a minus 43 and at the end of his career, so that factors into that as well. 
Hogberg show, Hogberg, excuse me, showed signs for next year, and Adder showed signs for next year. So the fact that all these youngsters are starting to show movement for next year, and Jones is really good as a backup. If you want to keep him as a veteran, for me personally, I would just let the youngster Sandstrom ride it because it's not like I think this Flyers team, unless if a bunch of just moves I don't foresee coming are somehow able to happen. I think are going to be a great playoff team this year. So I would let Sandstrom, and even then, Sandstrom has looked good. The only game he's looked a little bit out of sorts and was against the Jets, and he was still able to battle in that game and keep them only to four goals after the Flyers also did not do the best at defending the net front on the other two goals. So two were on him, two were on the team. So it's a split factor there. But I like how the young guys have looked. I liked how Felix has looked overall. Cam Atkinson, I wouldn't be shocked. If he's kept or moved, he's like the 50-50 guy for me because if you keep him, he's a great leader in the locker room. If you trade him, then you're trading a guy that's kind of the older version of TK, and that would signal to me that you're probably keeping Travis Konechny. But we'll have to see what happens there. But everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. This has been a quick preview to our Philadelphia Flyers, the last game of the season that is going to be against the Ottawa Senators as the Flyers try to at least, even if they don't win, make some good inroads and keep having the great young guys that I mentioned in this video continue to look good to round out the season, to have some confidence heading into camp, and hopefully to make the team at the start of next season. This has been the latest edition and the last regular season preview edition of the Grittiest Take. My keys are goaltending, play tighter on defense, and obviously just have fun out there at the final game of the season in a lost cause season. Hopefully these young guys just continue to have success and look pretty good out there. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.